So the brain does a lot of things. It uh, helps us um, regulate our daily activity, uh, our sleep, our, uh, us walking, running, so motor behavior, swimming, but also learning, uh, dreaming, thinking. And so one key question to try to understand the brain is um, how are these different functions of the brain organized. And the idea is that each function uh, might be regulated by a group of neurons, several groups of neurons throughout the brain, which are called a circuit. And so a circuit is basically all, this, all the ensembles of neurons, in, likely in different parts of the brain, that overall organize a particular behavior. For example, um, how is vision achieved? Well, it starts with the eye, so there are a number of neurons in the eye that uh, will detect the light, and then other neurons uh, in the retina that will help process this signal and make sense maybe already of different colors or the movement uh, of, of uh, a particular visual stimulus. This information is going to send, be sent to uh, an area of the brain called the lateral geniculate. And from this, it will be sent to yet other brain areas, the visual cortex, the primary visual cortex, secondary, tertiary, etc. So from these original stimulus in the eye, you can see that the information will be transmitted through a chain of neurons that uh, will go from one brain area to the other. And all of this will help decompose decode the visual information into uh, what we ultimately will uh, understand as a percept, the percept of a light or an object moving, a uh, beautiful flower or a piece of art. So one can say that um, the first circuit to be um, analyzed using uh, neuroscience, neurobiological method was probably vision, uh, with the recording uh, by Hubel and Wiesel of uh, neurons from the visual cortex. And uh, they provide really the basic understanding of uh, how, uh, what type of computation the cortex uh, is making out of um, uh, the information reaching the eye. More generally, we know from lesions, accidental lesions or, uh, or strokes or, or, or various uh, lesions performed in the brain, that specific areas of the brain uh, seem to be dedicated to specific functions. So uh, if you lesion the Broca area in the brain, uh, individuals can't, can't uh, speak any longer or can't recognize language. If you ablate in other areas of the brain, uh, other areas of the brain, uh, individuals can't see or can't hear or, you know, have uh, impaired function. So you, you can see uh, a sort of map of the brain getting organized with specific areas being involved in the processing of certain stimuli or being involved in certain function. But what a circuit analysis is trying to do is to connect the dots between different areas. And what uh, uh, people interested in circuit are trying to understand is really the computation uh, that is performed by various areas of the brain. How do you go from a simple stimulus or a complex stimulus into uh, this percept? How is uh, attention, awareness uh, arising um, by function of specific brain areas? This analysis of brain circuit really um, has uh, evolved at a tremendous pace recently um, by uh, different methods. So um, being able to record from the brain, uh, so putting electrodes in the brain and, and understanding the language of neurons, which is um, a set of action potential um, was performed mainly in anesthetized animal for the longest time. But um, over the last decade or so, techniques have evolved to now be able to do uh, similar recording or um, 
being able to estimate brain function in awake animal and even in awake behaving animals. So techniques of electrophysiology, techniques of imaging also um, have really um, uh, given uh, a window into how does the brain function in real time in an animal uh, doing a specific task, whether uh, it's a visual stimulation, uh, whether it's uh, responding to a visual stimulus or um, a touch or an olfactory stimulus. And this ability to visualize the brain in real time and maybe even specific brain areas, a uh, number of brain areas in real time is, is something that uh, is quite extraordinary. After being able to record or observe neuronal activity in a particular area of the brain that uh, accomplishes a certain task, then uh, the next step is really to try to perturb this function. Some uh, extraordinary discovery uh, over the last few years have made this possible. And for example, uh, uh, the uh, invention and development of technologies such as optogenetics, chanrodopsin and other type of molecules that can be activated by light and leads to neuronal activity, increased neuronal activity, or for some forms of those molecules actually reduce uh, neuronal activity, enable to have animals in which one can put uh, an optic fiber in uh, reaching a certain brain area, express uh, these uh, charrodopsin molecules uh, by specific neuronal type, and then uh, one can observe the change in behavior uh, in animals um, that uh, uh, in which those specific populations are activated or not. And so there are uh, specific circuits um, for which uh, this ha has really uh, led to uh, extraordinary uh, development. For example, one can dissect uh, the circuit underlying an essential behavior such as feeding behavior. Uh, what is happening when an animal is hungry? What are the neurons in the brain that detect the level of hunger or the level of the lack of nutrient um, in the animal and then triggers uh, the search for food? What are the neurons that decide that there's enough food, there's no need to eat any longer and the animal reaches society? So you can uh, destroy specific brain areas, but uh, that was this lesion experiment were well done in the past. Now you can specifically modify uh, a very uh, a genetically identified neuronal population and activate it. And if you activate the right po neuronal population, this could lead to an animal um, uh, eating uh, voraciously or refusing to eat, although it's in principle hungry. So this type of uh, genetic manipulation of circuit is really completely changing the way uh, one uh, studies the brain, uh, which is now you need to identify a particular brain area, then you can identify the specific neuronal type that is involved in a particular brain function. And now you can manipulate the activity of uh, this particular uh, neuronal function. And so that's, I think, the future of the analysis of neuronal circuit. And again, uh, this is really the basis of what the brain is, uh, the connection between uh, different neurons, uh, and what is each, what is the task of all these interconnected neurons? How do they exchange information? Uh, what is the computation that is being performed? And overall, how are all these functions also organized vis-a-vis uh, -vis each other? Um, what um, what is the physiological state of in the, in the individual, but also um, what is the level of attention or awareness uh, doing to control overall the global function of the brain. So we are completely uh, at the infancy of circuit analysis. Uh, we are still at a stage where we are 
uh, looking at one circuit underlying one specific behavior. But the reality is the brain is not functioning this way. The brain is functioning with uh, achieving multiple tasks uh, simultaneously. And so how is uh, are the different brain function integrated? Uh, what makes the brain uh, to decide on a particular task? How are these, uh, the experience memorized? How is consciousness affected? Um, all of these are really the holy grail of neuroscience. Moreover, being able to identify specific circuit, being able to modulate specific circuit could also have huge implication in uh, mental disorders in which specific circuits are likely to be dysfunctional. Why are they dysfunctional? Is there any way one can correct their function? Uh, this, I think, is uh, um, the, the, the dream goal for maybe the next 50 years.